the Enov K5 is their flagship 4K dual motorcycle camera system. If you've not checked out the review vid yet, check it out up here. This is how you install it. Down in the dirt. Right then folks, so how do we install the new K5 Enov dash cam? Well, I've done an install vid of the K2. Very similar, although the K5 has a few slight differences, which will mean we might have to tweak the installation a little bit. I've stripped the bike down, taken off the K2 system. I've left a couple of panels off and I'll go through that as we go. First off, this is probably the main change, is the fact that the DVR module, like the hard drive that records everything, that's all integrated into the front 4K camera. So this has some very short leads attached to it and everything else has to screw onto this. I personally think these cables should be much longer so they can run over into the back of the bike and you can connect everything like under the seat where you know where the old DVR module used to be kept. This limits and makes everything a little bit chunky when it's out here. But anyway, you've got to locate this camera. Couple of different positions where this can go. Uh, I had the, the old K2 just under here on the GS. It fits in nice and snug. With this, there's no real mount that I could use to put it in there. However, I could use some 3M like Velcro type stuff. That's probably the option I'll go for. Another option would be to locate it up on here, but then it sits very proud. It's fairly obvious to prying eyes. You do get the odd idiot out there who might want to come by and either bend it, snap it off or steal it or vandalize it in some way. Uh, you could mount it on the sides here above the indicators, but again, the field of vision is gonna be blocked to the right if you mount it on the left of the bike, and if you mount it on the right of the bike, the left will be slightly blocked as well. Another good place is under the beak. There's some bolts there. You can flip the camera upside down, and then in the app, there's a mirroring function which will flip the footage back over. So you could mount it upside down and have that underneath the beak there. That is a good option, but then, with all these wires, you're then gonna to have to get them located somewhere under there. And it's also way open to the elements and all the crud coming up here. For me, I think I'm probably just gonna go for that position, just under the headlight in this little gap here on the GS, like the K2. So let's crack on. So my plan here, is I'm gonna use some of this 3M Velcro. I'm gonna put a little bit of Velcro down there and a little bit on the back of the camera. And then this is just gonna, that all slides in under there rather neatly. I'm gonna have to have it sort of sat like that, I think, just to give me some some height there. There's about, what, five mil, eight mil, something like that between the top of the camera and under here. Well, I need that to be able to get it in over the Velcro and down. So, a little bit of Velcro here, a little bit of Velcro underneath, and that'll do us. So I'm thinking, I'll just put a little spot Maybe an inch of Velcro there to give me a little bit of leeway. Yeah, that'll do. Just about an inch. Maybe an inch and a half of Velcro, that'll do. And then obviously you need the bit that goes onto the camera, so. Done. Now I've already treated that. If you can get yourself some alcohol wipes and give it a, a wipe, that'll make sure everything's nice and clean there. So I need it roughly in the middle and about there, that will do. Now, let's put it onto this. So we have two different heights there. Can you see where this raised mount is for the mounting piece? Now I'm gonna use that to work in our favor. So if I put the Velcro on this level, if you look at the front of the beak here, it slopes down, doesn't it? So the back here is much higher than this part here. And I'm hoping that what I can do is I can use this little bump here to compensate for that. So as the beak slopes down, I can have that sort of resting to try and keep the camera reasonably level. So just like that, a little bit of Velcro at the back here, some Velcro there on the beak, and hopefully... Okay, not massively convinced. I'll have to give that a trial and see. We might have to tweak the front location a little bit. I mean, it's, it's reasonably solid, that, but we'll have to see what it's like. I imagine on really rough terrain, not that I do much off-roading, but on really rough terrain, that's going to take a, a hell of a, a padgering. So we'll need to um, we'll need to watch that. But anyway, okay. The other issue is going to be connecting everything at the back. It's going to be very fiddly in the back there. But I think that's probably one of the the neatest positions. Still quite prominent, but I need that access to get this in and out 
to get that SD card. Hmm. All right. All right, folks, so rear camera. If you've seen the K2 install vid, I've done exactly the same thing with this camera. I didn't leave the K2 camera on there because this one is slightly different. It's been upgraded a little bit. It's still 1080, but the camera, the power, everything like that is slightly different when I looked at the spec sheet. So I took the old one off and I've put the new one on exactly the same way. In fact, I'll cut to that K2 install bit now. Come and look at this. So this here, is where I reckon I'm gonna mount the rear camera. I've just used the existing bolt, the indicate, rear indicator bolt. So I took that bolt out, it's a T27 torsion. Used the, the L bracket, as you can see, screwed the bolt back in. This is all um, not fixed yet. But as you can see there, the camera just sits lovely. It just fits in between the indicator and the top of the number plate. So then with the wiring, that'll all just get cable tied nice and neatly in there. And what I've done is I've threaded it up through here and then through the little gap there in the plastics. So that cable will then run through here. The setup's just a little bit weird. Everything has to connect up to where the DVR module is, which is up at the front camera. So this cable has to run all the way. All the cables have to run all the way up the front of the bike and down to connect in there. So wherever you locate that front camera, you've got to bear in mind, you've got to have access to run all the cables to it. That's both cameras located. Now what I'll do is I'll fit the DVR module in there, get all the cable work, connect everything up to the battery, and then we can run all the cables, connect everything up to the DVR module. Bosh, job done. Let's crack on. DC converter unit, it is slightly different to the K2, again, so I've removed the K2 one. This one handles more power, it's just, it's an upgraded one, basically. As before with the K2, if you have a little look, there is a little LED which goes blue when the power's on. That lets you know everything is functioning okay. Although now we have a remote control unit, which I'll cover soon, which will let you see from the cockpit that everything's working okay. Same thing, got a little bit of 3M Velcro on the back. There's a little bit of 3M Velcro here. That just keeps it all nice firmly in place. Job done. Nothing. Yellow wire is your switch live feed, which you either solder or connect up to a switch live feed somewhere for the ignition so that everything is only powered when the ignition is turned on. Or as I'm going to do, I'm going to solder it up to a connector and connect it to my hex easy can. Or you could use the Denali power hub, anything like that, if your bike's got a canvas system. Then you've got blue and black wires here with inbuilt fuses, and they just run straight down to your bike's battery. Very, very simple. I go in a lot more depth in the K2 installation. So if any of that is like gobbledygook to you, head to the K2 video and check that out. So that is the DC converter connected up to the battery, nice and easy. Remember with the battery terminals, you remove negative first, then positive, and then you put back on positive, then negative. So negative, positive, positive, negative. So that's it all done. The DC converter actually comes with ends, some terminal ends already applied, which is a massive positive in of. Thank you very much for doing that. Makes it so much easier. I know Steve over at a bike thing, he's probably screaming because he's very OCD about these sort of things. Sorry, Steve, but uh, I can't be bothered with the faff. But uh, Steve would probably remove all this stuff and run the wires in through the back and come down this way. I've simply come over the side here, run round the back and in. One thing I didn't like was that this time round with the K2, the inbuilt fuse was much further down this way. So there was much more wire to run and you could get that fuse, tuck it in right in through the back there. On this, there's really not much room at all. So the fuse is lying bare there. I don't like that. But I don't know any other way of doing it because there's literally about eight inches of cable before the fuse. That fuse could do with being much further up here. But anyway, that's them all connected. There's plenty of slack in these wires for give and take in any of the suspension and any of the movement. I will tidy these up and cable ties these all together, keep them all nicely in place. I'm going to run this yellow cable under the back of the under the back of the frame there to the back here, and then we'll solder on a connection 
to connect up to the Hex Easy Can. If you're not going to connect via like the Denali Power Hub or the Hex Easy Can, that would just connect straight up to a, a, a live trigger point. So something like your horn, the ignition switch, your light switch, your rear uh, light switch, something like that. Anywhere that gets power only once the ignition is on. For me, I'm going to use the, the Hex Easy Can. Nice and simple. If you see my K2 or any of my other sort of installation type vids, you'll know the cable tie technique. One long cable tie, that allows you to poke it through all the little gaps and nooks and crannies that you want. Another smaller one that goes in through the end there. And then all I do is I take the cable, just fold it around there, pull that tight. Then I can just feed this where I want it to go, pull through. And there's a cable and that pulls out job done okay so i have just soldered one of the hex easy can connectors onto the yellow trigger wire if you do it this way with a hex easy can denali sound bomb anything like that simple just yellow to yellow and then with the black one you just tape off you don't need that so that's that done and then that just simply clicks in and that is it i can tuck all these wires away tidy them up later so now we have the DC converter connected to the battery, the live trigger to the hex easy can or to wherever your live trigger feed is. You can see there's power going to it because there's the blue LED on the DC converter. Now all I need to do is run the cables up the front. GPS, we've got to locate the GPS module. Let's get that done. As you can see, there's usually a triangular piece of plastic there. There's one screw, unscrew that. Uh, and then there's like a sort of suction hole there and a mounting point there. That normally just sits in like that. Take that off. In here is a void, which cannily enough allows that to sit right in like that. It's just mount like that on some uh, double-sided Velcro. Okay, folks, so what we need to do now is cameras are now mounted. The DC converter is mounted, installed. The GPS is installed. We've got all these cables. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the cables up under this side of the, the tank, under this cowling, up to the front there, and then I can connect it. We've got the remote control, but I'm going to mount the remote up on the front here so the cables won't need to be in here. You need to remove the central column, which is nice and easy. It is uh, these two screws. Take those out. There's a screw here, screw there, one in the middle. Take them all out, and then it's just some gentle persuasion. Lifting up the central bit of plastic pops out and comes away. I go into loads of detail in the K2 installation, there's no point in doing that again here. So you take that off, then you just need to remove that screw, that screw, that will give you some leeway to get the cables in underneath. First one I'm going to run, which is the GPS, run that up. So you just want to make sure it's nice and free, it's not snagging on anything at all. So that's cool. Right, next cable, an important one. This goes from the DC converter. So again, just make sure it's got a fair bit of slack for the time being. The rear camera cable. So you can see here, these, key, these cables, they need to, ideally, I need them under this black bracket. So unscrew that one, unscrew this one. That's gonna give us just enough play to get that underneath so it's not biting on anything at all there same with this cable i want this underneath there as well again i don't want that biting on anything okay so i'm happy with that whack these back on and now we just have to connect all the wires up to the front camera, the DVR module, make sure everything switches on, and then we can tidy everything up. Job done. Okay, folks, so I've pulled all the cables through from the front there, and there's just enough slack to connect everything up. Now, thankfully, everything is color-coded. We're looking good here. How many have I got? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, what am I missing? What am I missing? Mic. There's one more, which is this, a mic. Now the K5 uses an external mic input direct to the DVR. This, you can either put that somewhere on the bike for engine noise, or you could try passing the cable up 
into your lid and using it for a bit of motor vlogging. Now I'm going to try both and see. So for the time being, I'm just going to have this dangling in the cockpit so I can wire it up into my helmet. It's not ideal, I know, but we'll give it a bash and see. So what we'll do is we'll just connect everything up now and then I'll be able to pull these wires back through, locate the front camera, tidy up all the wiring and then tidy everything up. We should be done. All colour coded, nice and easy. These are all waterproof connections as well. You don't want to over tighten them. So that's one. That one goes in here. Got to admit, it is a little bit fiddly this. Female to a male. And last one. Okay. So we should all be done there. And we just pull these cables back through. And then locate that onto its Velcro. Right folks, what I want to do before I finish and I tidy everything up is I've got all the cameras installed, everything installed like that. All I want to do now is switch the system on, make sure I'm getting feeds to the app, make sure all the cameras are leveled at the right angles and things. Once I'm happy with all that, then uh, I can tidy everything up and that'll be us done. But essentially, hopefully, fingers crossed, that is us. Switch her on. So we can see via the remote, the green light is solid, which means it's recording. The GPS is flashing, which means the GPS signal is looking for a GPS signal. We're inside, so that might be why. The Wi-Fi signal is flashing because we haven't connected via Wi-Fi yet, so we'll do that now. Nice and simple, just like with the K2. Open up the InOv app, open up your Wi-Fi settings. Now we're looking for the K5 camera, InOv K5. Tap that. Default passwords just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can change that. That is us now connected to the InOv. Go back to the app. Let's tap the camera screen. Bosh, there we go. So you can see there that the main display is the front and the little inset one is the rear. You can change that, have the rear as the main and the front as the inset. You can have it just front, just rear, but I'm happy with front is the main, rear is the inset. I would say the front is looking nice and level, the rear is looking nice and level. Whew, that's us done folks. So, come see what I've done. So there we go. Cabling's all been tidied up, just lightly cable tied. Plenty of room there. The live trigger feed is running up into the back there, so that's all taken care of. The power leads down to the battery, they're all channeled down there, kept nice and tidy. There's still plenty of slack on these. I can easily just remove that off the Velcro so that can pop on and off. The rear camera cable, that runs down here. And then I have cable tied it onto the rear frame. So that's running there, just like the K2 one. The GPS receiver is under here with the cables running up. Everything then runs under this left-hand side cowl. So between the cowl and the tank, there's plenty of space there. Just make sure it's not caught on anything. There's plenty of space to run all the cables. The cables run out through here. Little bit of a concoction there. I've coiled everything up tight enough so that it's not all hanging. And I've cable tied them onto, you can see, Cable tied it onto one of the struts that run across the front there. And then those cables run down the bottom and out the front and connect onto the camera. So the camera sits there. This is a big old unit, this. You can't really hide that as well as you could hide the K2, but we'll see. Remote control. So all I've done is I've just used some of the 3M Velcro, attached a bit onto the cowling here, another bit onto the bottom of the remote, and that is stuck there. So all in folks, I don't think that's too bad a setup at all. It's taken me a while because I've been recording it, but uh, I reckon give yourself probably an hour, hour and a half and you should be able to do this, no problem. I'll probably do it even quicker to be honest. The mic. Now I have just left this running free on a cable. Every time I get on the bike, I'm going to feed this up and into my helmet. Total faff, I know. I want to see what the sound quality is like. Is it possible to vlog with the K5 and the onboard mic. I think ultimately long term, what I would do is I'll run this back down through the same channels, all the other cables, and I'd probably have the, the mic somewhere at the back here, just lying free. I don't know, somewhere where it can pick up the engine noise. But anyway, let's head out on a bike and check out what the footage is like.
So folks, if you want to check out the footage from the K5, head on over to my full review, which is available here. Or is it that side? One of these sides. All right, folks, if you bear with me to this point in the video, you are pretty special. Thank you so much for all your support. Keep on getting on out there. Keep on doing your thing. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. woo -ha! The Enov K5 is their flagship 4K dual motorcycle camera system. Whew, out of breath. The Enov 4... The Enov K5 is their 4K 